where is never answerable in terms of a level, but what does a bottom look like in terms of the conditions? Well, a lot of people are looking for the same things. One, really a washed out reading in terms of the number of stocks making new lows, the number of stocks, percentage of stocks that are down 10, 20 percent from their highs. That's already really, I think, flashing some of those signs that we are pretty well washed out. Uh, investor and trader sentiment, getting those plunging to certain levels where you can tell that fear has really built up. I think you're also starting to see that again yesterday afternoon and today if you look at uh, options, put call volumes, things like that. And then you want, obviously, one of these rallies to hold. Uh, this is how the market reacts. It's emotional. It's fragile. You have these waves of selling and buying. None of these rallies have really been all that impressive in terms of their ability to stay for an hour. That's what you really have to see. Yeah, we, we just want to see a little bit calmer markets here. We, we've seen today, again, fifth day in a row, there's no let up in the volume or the volatility. Uh, we've seen enormous moves, and every single day this week, in the middle of the day, out of nowhere, enormous moves in volume. That signals that we are still in this deleveraging process that we yeah. keep talking about hey, from various strategies. Hey, Bob, ahead, Scott. Bob look, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, I just want to point out that the Dow has surged into positive territory yeah. as we're having yeah. this conversation. Um, it's, it's right around the flat line now, but um, yeah. you get my point that this is no. Maybe on the back end of some of that margin activity that people were worried about in the mid-afternoon, abating a bit. What's your take? Hey, can you can we highlight? Well, it took 20 minutes to move 500 right. points. That, that's right, and there's a, there's a sign of that that this enormous intraday move. Here's the one thing that you want to watch for. In general, all this week, the rallies that we have seen have been on lighter volume. The declines that we have seen have been on heavier volume. Now, just in this spurt, uh, Michelle was pointing out in the last 20 minutes, there's been a spurt up in the volume. And what I watch is the big three ETF volumes, the SPY, uh, the Russell 2000, and the triple Qs, the NASDAQ 100. That's a substantial part of intraday active trader activity. And when those things start spiking up dramatically on an upside, I'd say that's a good sign. I haven't seen that all week, but it, it, uh, I do notice some uptick in, in volume as we have moved up. And just to point out, guys, you know, a week ago on Friday, we had that pretty big sell-off, and you heard it repeated, as always gets repeated, that markets seldom bottom on a Friday. It's just kind of one of these old Wall Street rule, rules of thumb. And now, of course, if you did try to buy the dip last Friday, Monday's drop was a pretty rude uh, answer to whether that was a smart or not. So who knows what that means for today? Maybe the market will just keep people guessing and say, guess what? what? Friday was uh, so, a worthy bottom, but we'll have to see. Yeah. What, that would, it mean or, what would it mean, Bob, or signal to you if the Dow and the S&P closed higher today? Well, first off, it's positive, but let me just point out that we had a very strong open. The S&P was at 2620 when we opened. We had, a, we had a big move up in the first couple of minutes. So we went from 2620 to, I think, 2535 was a low. So that's an 80-point range. So this is the way I look at things. So halfway through is 2577, exactly where we are. We have regained exactly 50% of the high to the low that we've had. Uh, it'd be positive if we had, uh, I think it'd be great if we ended positive, but it would really be positive if we could pass the old in well, intraday high today, and that would be a sign that buyers were, n were notably coming back one, in the market. One positive for certain, at least from a technical standpoint, Mike Santoli, is that we, as we said earlier, the S&P had tested that 200-day moving average and bounced now, and, and bounced pretty significantly. Yeah. It's definitely a net positive. Uh, I do think it's very uh, telling that we had to have a 12% drop in basically two weeks to reach the 200-day. What that tells you is how extended we were on the upside. Uh, and yet, uh, forward going, it's a reminder that that's basically defining your uptrend, your really long-term, slow-moving uptrend. And so what we've done is unwound this massive two-month rally, and now you're back to seeing if the uh, if the longer-term uptrend is still reliable. That's what the 200-day represents. It's not just some, you know, magic-coded number. That's really what it's telling you. And, and people need to keep in mind, when I say deleveraging, this is a global phenomenon. If all global markets are down about 11 percent. The Nikkei, China, all the big markets, Germany, it's remarkable. Everything is down and almost Bob, exactly 11%. And Bob, just for the novice viewer, deleveraging means selling? 
Generally, yes. So remember what we were talking about, these various strategies that have confused everyone. The biggest strategy of all was short volatility and go long the stock market. Traders express that in various ways. Shorting the VIX is one, but going long the market, you sell puts. That's effectively long the market. When the market dropped dramatically on Monday, suddenly those puts went in the money. Those traders in that trade were underwater. They had to go out and short the market to continue to stay uh, neutral where they wanted to be. That was a problem. That exacerbated it. There are other strategies we've talked about but basically traders were excessively long the markets and have been unwinding a lot of those trades we just don't know how big the trades are nobody Bra well, publishes them so their estimates Kramer keeps pointing out and he's doing it as we speak again about those VIX products the same ones yeah. that that many have deemed the culprit in sort of some of the velocity right. and the moves that we've seen as when they have dropped as they did if we could put them up yeah. um, then the yeah. market has They're taken off the opposite direction I, I have pointed out, and I felt on Monday, that those strategies were a factor in the drop in the market after the close. But there's other kinds of strategies out there that don't involve tra trading VIX products that are exchange-traded notes or exchange-traded uh, ETFs. There is momentum trades. There's risk parity. There's people who just go, I mentioned earlier, short the VIX and long the market. That doesn't involve ETFs at all. These are other strategies that are also deleveraging. So, yes, that is a part of this stew we have been talking about, uh, those problems with the VIX products, but it's not the only component that's here. Of course, but, 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 but if nothing else, an indication, if you're sort of looking to get a gauge on where things might be trading, looking at those and seeing what they're doing on an intraday basis is part of the point I believe that Jim is making in telling us to look at it. Right. I mean, they are some indicator of perhaps some strategy, some traders who are trapped or basically forced into some action in response to a very unstable setup when it comes to those volatility derivatives. There's no doubt about that. I do think you can broaden it out a little bit, though, to say when the actual volatility levels of the market go up, as they have so dramatically right now, and the VIX goes up, your standard asset allocation, big institution says, okay, that's my signal of how risky the environment is right now. Do I want to be more or less exposed to stocks than I did a month ago? Most of them are saying less. That's also deleverage. That's also just bringing position size down and reassessing what your risk level is. Final point, bond prices, meaning have, prices themselves have been going down as well. If you have a 60-40 stock bond mix, both legs have been losing value, and so that creates uh, different dynamics in terms of how you would try to rebalance. And All if right. you want to see just Thank how, guys, how we got to go. Thank mark. you, Bob. Thank you, Mr. Santoli. Ahead. Much appreciated. Okay. All right. Another big issue this week with the markets was President Trump signing a multi-billion dollar spending bill to keep the government open. That spending pushing up the deficit.